Hey guys, this is James from Isotropic and in this video I'm going to be discussing our agency speed stack and that's just the collection of plugins and services and tools that we use to ensure that all of our websites run as fast as possible. So I'm going to be discussing a ton of WordPress plugins, a ton of WordPress specific services and a bunch of tools that we use to test the speed of the website and this is going to be all inclusive from the foundation of speed host for WordPress websites to the testing tools that we use to ensure that there's nothing more we can do to eke out some speed from the sites. This is a WordPress specific speed stack because we're an agency that builds with WordPress. So if you don't have WordPress, this may still be helpful, but this is primarily for WordPress users. I'm going to kind of run through all of our um, use cases and tools in order. So I'm going to go from uh, kind of how we build the sites and then how we optimize them. So we're going to start with the hosting. We're going to take a look at CDNs. Then we're going to take a look at the builders and technologies and platforms that we use to create the sites. Then we'll take a look at image optimization, caching, and specific optimization tools. We'll take a look at analytics tools and just a couple other unique ones that we use in our stack. There are different use cases, as I said in the beginning of this video, so for each of these tools, I'm going to discuss in what situation we may use them. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. Uh, in the link in the description, there's an article that has all of this written out. You can use it as a checklist. There are also links to all of these plugins in the description below. Some are uh, affiliate links, some are not. And with that said, let's take a look at our agency speed stack, something that you could recreate yourself if you're looking for a solid way to increase the performance of your WordPress website. So the first thing I want to discuss is the hosting of your WordPress website. And this is going to be a fairly long section and it's an important section. You can skip through it, but it's a really important section, at least to understand this basic premise. If you have slow hosting, if you have shared hosting from a company like GoDaddy or Bluehost or even SiteGround, you're not going to have a fast loading website. You need a good host. I call this the foundation of all speed and performance because it really is. You need to build from a foundation and this offers you the most solid foundation that you can get. You need to have a good fast host that is able to offer you the resources, offer you the hardware, offer you the basic server optimization that you can then build upon by using other performance plugins and services and tools. In this speed stack, I'm going to discuss three hosts that we use for different types of projects in our agency. And these are the three hosts that we find offer incredible value for money and great performance. So the first one is called Rocket.net. And Rocket.net is a pretty new offering. It's also a smaller company, but with that come a ton of benefits. So this is completely managed WordPress hosting, and it's the only platform that delivers their content using Cloudflare Enterprise. So when you purchase a plan through this company, you also get access to Cloudflare Enterprise, their CDN, and the web application firewall. The reason this is included number one on our list is because we actually use this for our agency blog, which gets... I want to say around 60,000 views per month now and it's just going up and up. So we use this to serve our site so I figured I'd, I'd offer this as the first one. We're also partners with this company so you can get 50% off I think four months maybe by using our link in the code in this, the description below. And as you can see this is a really fast host because they number one use crazy servers and allocate a ton of resources to your website. They also use Cloudflare Enterprise, and by combining good hardware and a good CDN, you can see that there are actual speed increases that are, are notable here. We noticed the same thing when we launched our website. We moved from the second host that I'm going to talk about to this host. So if you're looking for really solid managed hosting, this is your best bet. The uh, support is second to none. You'll get in contact with the founder or... Uh, one of the higher up managers here because it's a smaller company. So if you're looking for good hosting, check this out. Link in the description below to this as well as a super detailed review. Host number two is called Cloudways and Cloudways is what we host the majority of our client websites on. It allows you to host on platforms like DigitalOcean. So we use our DigitalOcean hosting. We use this to manage DigitalOcean. 
and they also include specific performance features like varnish caching, uh, their own CDN, and a couple other things. And it's really uh, cost effective because you can start at $10 per month, you pay as you go, and you just increase as need be. So I think we have a couple $42 a month servers and we have a bunch of client websites on it. And if you wanna scroll through, you can see that there are a bunch of just benefits. There's also a link in the description and a discount code because we are also partners with these guys. We host a ton of client websites on this company. Final offering that we use for speed is Servable. And this is for super mission critical websites that need to be super fast and pricing is not a worry for them. So this company is a Swedish company and they really are just focused on speed. So the whole offering here is speed, speed, speed. And they have a ton of really good hardware number one but they also have proprietary optimization uh, their own caching plugin and just a ton of different features that result in super fast hosting so um, you can see that there are a bunch of different benefits here we've used this company for three client projects so far which are really major websites that get uh, around a million views a month so um, we use this because of the infrastructure behind it we also use this company because the support's great and we've we've had to use support for these guys because they're more complex than managed in cloudways managed rocket in cloudways but at the end of the day support gets it done and if you're looking for the fastest out there this is it there's also a link in the description we're not partners with these guys because we don't use them so much but if you want to check it out you can use that link so that's really the hosting. And the reason I went over the hosting and I spent so much time on hosting is because it's the foundation of your speed. If you have a bad host, you're never going to have a fast website. So you need to start with hosting and then work upwards. Um, in terms of budget allocation, hosting should be probably the biggest expense in terms of your website as well as your performance. And you should allocate your money here. If you don't have good hosting, you will not have a fast website. So it, it's honestly pointless to continue if you have poor hosting. So take all your money if need be, get good hosting, leave out any other plugin. But if you have a budget, get good hosting and then go on and use some optimization plugins that I'll talk about now. Okay, so next up after good hosting is a quality CDN. And a CDN is not absolutely necessary like good hosting, but it will always result in a faster website. So we always include a CDN on all of our websites. And with a CDN, you have a shorter connection distance because you have geographical nodes in specific locations. And these nodes will serve your website from a geographically shorter connection distance, which result in decreased latency and faster loading times. So there are three main CDNs that we use. And you may, men you may remember that the Rocket.net hosting includes Cloudflare Enterprise. So our own site is served through the Cloudflare CDN, which is one of them on this list. But there are a couple other ones that we like using as well. Cloudways CDN is a CDN that is offered by Cloudways, has really easy and quick integration into websites hosted on the Cloudways platform, and it's really cheap. So you can see that there are a couple selling points, easy integration, but it's really cheap. That's the, that's the main thing here. You get a CDN, you get the benefits of a CDN, which include speed, but also include reliability. There's not going to be any issues if you have a ton of traffic hitting your site. Um, there's also security and just performance in general. This one starts at $1 per 25 gigabytes of transfer, and you can see that it's all this. But one thing to mention is that Cloudways CDN is the best option if you're on Cloudways, but it's actually just a white labeled version of the Stackpath CDN. And Stackpath is a huge company that offers a content delivery network. And many people don't know this, but they're actually the backbone of many other CDNs because this company is just a white label. You can use it through the company, which I recommend. But it's also a white label provider, so you can offer your own CDN by purchasing this and changing a couple things and changing the branding and then offering it as your own. So Cloudways does that, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's really cheap and it integrates well, but it's actually just stack path into infrastructure. The same goes with WP Rockets um, CDN. I think that's Rocket CDN. They're just another stack path company. So you'll see that um, stack path is a great option, and they're really cheap. Uh, and if you're looking for a solid 
CDN that is not using Cloudflare and not using one of the white labels, I recommend taking a look at Stackpath. We've used this a lot in the past, and it's just a really solid network that has a ton of great features. So you have 50 edge locations, so those are the places that will serve your website and a geographically closer distance than from your origin server. Um, you have Edge Engine, which is just something that serves quicker to, to repeat visitors, I believe, and your Edge network. It's all marketing, but at the end of the day, this is a solid, solid choice, and it's a pretty cheap choice. It's also one that is for larger applications, I'd say. So if you have a bigger website, this is something to consider. If you have a smaller website, I'd probably look to Cloudway CDN or using one of them through uh, maybe WP Rocket, which is a plugin that I'll talk about after this. Final one is Cloudflare CDN, and this is just another offering for CDNs, and I use this on big websites. So we use this on primarily mission critical content websites uh, and this is a whole suite but in terms of performance by using the enterprise cdn we get the benefit of that cdn global network i think it's the largest global network out there um, we can use cloudflare workers to ensure that things are served as quick as possible and it's a relatively decent cost for the performance and security that we get so you can see a bunch of selling points again uh, and it's something to take a look at it supports quick so that's a newer transport protocol which is really fast and doesn't stop and wait if a connection fails um, in terms of http2 http2 is really fast faster than one but it comes with its own issues so supporting http3 is something that's really important but your host will also need to support it so uh something is just to take a look at here there are a bunch of um, enterprise level features uh we use Cloudflare Enterprise. We also use the free version of Cloudflare for some sites, um, and it comes with a ton of um, benefits, caching, bandwidth costs reduced, DDoS protection, and all the all the fun stuff. But I mean, uh, in terms of CDNs, this is a great option. So take a look at these three CDNs for just quicker performance. Okay, so that's it with the CDNs. Let's get into the tools and plugins specific to WordPress to ensure that our WordPress website loads quickly. Okay, so after the hosting and CDN, I think the most important thing is how you actually create your website, what you're using to build it. And there are a couple ways to go about this in terms of performance, but our agency pretty much primarily uses the Oxygen Builder nowadays. Oxygen is a super lightweight page builder, but it comes with a ton of developer features. So it's good for our clients because they can use it themselves, but it's also good for us because we can use a bunch of different features. Developer friendly, we can write in HTML, we can write in CSS, JavaScript, PHP directly into the page builder, and it completely disables the WordPress theme system. In terms of code output, the code is incredibly low bloat when you compare it to other builder platforms specific to the WordPress CMS. This is the most lightweight platform that offers the most functionality out of anything on the market that's why we use it and you'll see if you search for oxygen builder agency we show up on the first page a detailed review of oxygen builder is oxygen builder good for agencies if you go to our home page you'll see that we we market ourselves as a oxygen builder agency because of the benefits that it comes with it, a custom website no wordpress themes and complete flexibility in terms of building if you want to read more you can go here click on why oxygen and you'll see our whole manifesto on why we choose to use this builder but if you're not going to use oxygen the things to think about are the code output of your theme so how is your theme coded how is that working if you are an agency if you are somebody who is technically skilled you may want to consider building out your own theme but honestly we go ahead and and we we use oxygen for i'd say 95 percent of all the work that we do now and i have not been happier since we switched over to this platform uh, it's a lifetime purchase it's a super amazing community and we do a ton of content on oxygen so definitely something to consider the page builder the framework the theme that you're using on top of wordpress uh, after good hosting, after a solid CDN is the most important. If you're using a page builder like Divi or Elementor, I don't want to call you out, but I'm calling you out. The code output on those those um, tools is just incredibly bloated. And by bloated, I mean the theme, the, the actual code that comes out of these builders. And I'm going to show you right now on the Elementor website is just super, super heavy. 
uh, has a ton of DOM elements that don't need to be there, but are there because it has to support the builder and the builder's five versions deep. But you'll see that, I mean, this is, this is incredible. We start off here. We have three wrappers for that. We have positioning wrappers. And I mean, it, the, the actual code that comes out of some of these builders is just super, super bloated. Uh, and in terms of oxygen, really and this isn't supposed to be a comparison but it's just something that i like showing people in terms of oxygen you have html elements you have your section you have a wrap you have columns and then you have the two divs within the column and then you have your element and that's it so in terms of code output oxygen is crazy just find a good well coded um, theme code your own theme or use a page builder that offers the features that you as a developer would need but also includes super clean code so that's important. That's a really big aspect of website creation. And after hosting and a CDN, the way and the method that you actually build your site is just something that needs to be thought about from the start. Okay, so next up after how we have built our website is how we serve the website to our visitors. And um, in really simple terms, if you're using a WordPress website uh, and you're not optimizing and you're not using a cache solution, the way it works is that a visitor will request the page, the server will then use PHP to render the page on the back end, populate all that dynamic data, and then serve that page to the visitor that has been built especially for them in the back end. And this isn't a crazy long process, but it takes a lot of time, and if you have a heavy website that needs to do a lot of database queries, that needs to pull in a lot of information, um, and maybe this information is served to everybody, but there's no system in place to stop it from from having to render every time or have to populate the data every time then your website will load a little slowly so that's what a website cache does and for website caching in my opinion the best cache is WP rocket this is a paid solution WP rocket is a paid plugin but in terms of what it offers and the simplicity that it comes with there's nothing better on the market. So let's take a look at WP Rocket. Um, and this is a caching plugin, but it's also uh, a performance optimization plugin. There are a ton of different features that I'm going to walk you through on the back end right now. So you'll see that first off, it's a caching plugin. So the, the primary feature here is that it preloads pages, it takes your pages, it does that PHP process where it builds the page and then it stores a static copy of that page on your server. And by serving that static or by saving that static copy of the page, you'll see basic cache options. By saving that, you'll see that the page will be served to your visitor much quicker. So in 10 hours, your cache lifespan is 10 hours. So when you load the page, it will load from a static version of that page if that makes any sense um, in addition to this cache and we'll see that there are a bunch of nice selling points that you can go take a look at but in, in addition to this cache there are a ton of additional features that you get so file optimization really important on http1 servers that you minimize the number of requests that are being served so we can minify we can combine and then we can optimize css delivery so what this means is that we have a bunch of different css files that apply styles to the front of our website uh, and these include comments and these include white space so by removing that we have a smaller file size which takes less time to transfer simply because we're transferring less data to go a step further we can combine these files we can minify them and combine them together and what this does is it makes all of the, maybe like 20 different css style sheets into a single style sheet limiting the http requests and on an http one server these requests are done one after another so you serve one style sheet and it waits for that style sheet to transfer over and then you serve another and another and another on an http2 server and this is something that you can check uh, online there are a couple utilities quickly we can http2 server we can check to see what our server is we can see that isotropic is http2 um, and that's served by rocket again on an HTTP2 server, 
everything gets served at once it goes it starts at once at one time all of the styles and files get served at once so combining isn't good on an HTTP 2 but on a one then it is good so you can combine them all into a single file and then you can also optimize your CSS delivery which eliminates the render blocking CSS generates critical CSS styles so it looks like everything loads a lot quicker even though uh, it doesn't but it technically it doesn't but by optimizing the delivery your visitor will be able to see the site quicker see the styled site quicker same goes for javascript we can minify them we can combine them we can load some deferred this is important by deferring render blocking resources um, you can have a much quicker website because it stops the blocking of the rendering of the page by moving those javascript files either to the end of the render process by moving them to the footer or by loading them syn asynchronously or deferring them uh, we can also delay JavaScript execution. This is really important because if we're loading something like a chat widget on our site, uh, that's going to block the rendering of critical resources like, say, your uh, button functionality or something like that. So we can delay the JavaScript execution for non uh non-mandatory scripts so you can see here facebook lead pages google translate stuff like that until the user actually begins to use the site by moving uh, their mouse or scrolling or clicking and then they they will load the script so this results in a faster loading page um, then i'm going to really quickly just run through a couple other ones for media we can lazy load media which means it only gets loaded when it enters the viewport for the preloading again we can generate cache files by preloading them uh, which means we already have that cache file ready so we can serve that static page to the visitor um, so you can do sitemap based cache preloading uh, and then we can also preload links so if i'm hovering over this link and this is on my site then it will load the link in the background it's not actually going to load the page quicker but for the visitor it's going to load Look like it instantaneously loaded because it's already loaded it just knows when you're hovering over maybe you're going to click on it we can prefetch dns requests making external files load a, qu a bit quicker and again they note this here but in the real world this is really important for mobile networks because there's less bandwidth so prefetching uh, makes things go quicker and then we can also preload fonts the preloading fonts is important uh, if they're being served from a third party or from your own uh, or from your own website. Then we have a couple other things. We can minimize the heartbeat. We can integrate the Cloudflare CDN. Uh, we can integrate our CloudWiz CDN. We can integrate any of them. Uh, we can control heartbeat. We can uh, optimize our database by removing unnecessary entries to it. Uh, and here you can see including the CDN is pretty easy. So that's the performance plugin. That's the caching plugin performance plugin that we use. That's the main one. And the reason we use it is because you can see it's really easy to get and it offers really advanced things, but it's easy. It's, it, it's easy to understand. You check one thing off, you check another thing off, and now everything's combined and minified. And that's how it works. Uh, for the preloading, we can activate preloading. Actually, this is already activated when you install the plugin so it automatically begins to preload and cache your content so uh, as soon as you install this things are quicker and i mean there are just a bunch of things that you can work with here so that's the best plugin it's a paid plugin that's the only downside here and the price of this plugin i believe is 49 dollars um the reason we use this plugin is just because it's the best in the industry we have the agency license put it on all of our sites put it on the speed op sites so this is this is it <laughs> this is the this is the tool that puts everything together okay so after caching i think that image optimization is the most important aspect if you have really big images there's really no point on a website because at a certain resolution there's, you're not going to see any more quality. So there's no point in loading larger images because you're simply transferring more data, eating up more bandwidth, and making things load slower. Images have a major impact on the loading time of your website, so there's something that you seriously need to consider when building out the website. There's no problem with using a ton of images, especially if you lazy load them with WP Rocket, but if you load a ton of images that are not optimized, then there's a really big problem. So um, there are a couple different 
things that I want to discuss in terms of our image optimization tools and plugins. And some of these work together. Some of these will use one solution for one project and another for another one. But this should kind of go over all of that. Imageify is the first plugin in our recommendation list for image plugins. And this, as it says, allows you to speed up your website with lighter images. It's created by the same team behind WP Rocket, uh, and you can try it for free. However, um, it's a paid solution because they optimize images on their own server. So what this does, there are a couple things that this tool does. The first thing that Imageify does is it takes the image and it compresses it. It removes unnecessary data. It makes the file size smaller and it doesn't really minimize or lose any of the actual quality um, in terms of being just viewed on a website. So you have a smaller image file size on your website and it will also convert that to WP, WebP. WebP format is a second generation uh, image or a next generation image format that uh, transfers less data and it's just a lot quicker. It's only supported by modern browsers, so that's something to consider. But this plugin really automatically will convert everything, serve everything in the proper format. So if the browser doesn't support WebP, it'll serve it as a PNG or JPEG. If it does, it'll serve it as a WebP. Uh, and whatever the case is, the image is compressed and optimized without sacrificing quality. This is a completely automated plugin uh, and it uses an API. The API key works with the plugin that's installed on your website. That plugin that's installed on your website will then find the images. You can bulk optimize, but as you upload images, it will see that you have uploaded an image. It will push it to the Imageify optimization servers. From there, it will optimize the plugin. It will convert it into a couple formats, WebP included, and then it will push it back to your site. And then it will serve that smaller optimized image to your visitors. So essentially you're cutting out unnecessary data transfer, making sure that all of your images load quicker and it's just a really good solution. And you can see versus optimized and unoptimized, you can't. I mean, there's a little color difference here and there, but in terms of actual optimization or actual image visibility, you're not losing anything here. So this is our recommended one. You are, you might be surprised because you may not have heard of this plugin before, and that's just because it doesn't have an affiliate program, uh, so nobody actually talks about it. But this is this is our go-to. This is what we use on the Isotropic website. Um, another really interesting service, which is the a plugin that we used on our old version of the Isotropic website, is Short Pixel Adaptive Images. And this does image processing as I just discussed, but it also serves these optimized images via a global CDN. So this is an image CDN and what it does, it will smart crop the image, keeping the actual content of the image in frame. So you can see smart cropping versus dumb cropping. Uh, it crops out the image. So you can see that. Um, and then it also will uh, optimize the image and serve it as a WebP to browsers that support it or serve the optimized image via an image CDN. So that's really impressive and important because serving through an image CDN means that you can get on the fly optimization offering the best image type to whoever's visiting. So it, for a desktop it may serve one type of the image and to a mobile device it may serve another type. There's also a nice little um, feature that has blurred images before they are lazy loaded in and then as they're lazy loaded in it fades in so that's something that I really liked about this tool uh, but the same the, the issue here is that it's pretty costly you're paying for CDN delivered images so that's an ongoing cost um, if it's something, if you have a smaller website, I think that the cost isn't an issue. But if you have a big website, if you're getting like 70 to, to a million views per month, uh, then the, the optimization starts stacking up. And you can see that, uh, I mean, it sounds like a lot of images here, 50,000 images. But if you have 300 blog posts that are getting, say, um, 3,000 visits a day and each of them has... 10 images within them, you eat it up pretty quick. So um, just depends on your use case. This is something that you should check out if you're looking to optimize images. I really like this company. I like the adaptive images offering. It's really unique and I don't really see many other companies offering that. 
In addition, I like using WP Stateless and what this does is allows us to serve our images and store our images on Google Cloud Storage. So there are a couple different options here, but we actually use this as a completely stateless setup where our images are hosted on a Google Cloud Storage instance. Our website is hosted on our rocket.net hosting and the images are served via a CDN, but they're actually stored on the Google servers. This tool integrates with most image plugins, including Imageify, ShortPixel, and most CDNs. And this is something to consider because you can store and deliver media files from Google Cloud. The primary selling benefit here is um, you'll want to include it with a CDN, but the selling benefit here is that there's native integration between third party storage and your website. So if you're using one of these performance optimized hosts who may not offer a ton of storage for you, uh, and you have an image library of like 20 gigabytes, instead of paying for more than you need on your hosting, you can just offload the images to cheaper Google Cloud hosting. Um, and you can see that there are a couple things here. Uh, we're using stateless, so we're storing and serving media files with Google Cloud Storage only, and media files are not stored locally. It integrates with our Imageify, so we optimize the image, we push it to stateless, and then we serve it from a CDN, which is pulling from stateless. Um, this is, in our opinion, or in my opinion, in my opinion, the greatest um, image setup that you can have. So take a look at WP Stateless. This is free. Google Cloud Storage is paid, but it's cheaper than most hosting storage. The final list item on our image plugins for the speed stack is Image Engine. And this is an image optimizing CDN, very similar to adaptive images, but this is more enterprise level. So the enterprise level CDN right here is um, it will on the fly convert your image, crop your image, serve the image as need be. And you can see the primary selling benefit here and the thing that sets this apart from anything else on the market is that it will understand what the device OS is, what the browser is, what the screen size is, what the pixels per inch are, and then it will serve the best image for that. So if you have a super high resolution browser that's really big, it will serve more image data, ensuring that it doesn't look pixelated. If you're serving from an iPhone screen, it will serve less image data because the screen is smaller, because there's less um, pixels on the screen, you don't need as much data, it will serve less image data. It's also just a CDN, so you get the benefits of the CDN. Uh, you get benefits of a cache, caching um, and device-aware edge servers. The main thing here is device-aware, super cool. So you can pull that from your Google Cloud and then serve the image to your visitor. And that's um, a setup that we've used on pretty big websites. So it's really, I mean, I mean this is a solid, solid choice. It's enterprise level, but because it's enterprise level, you get economies of scale, you get your faster CDN, you get better optimization, you get JP2, JPEG2, or WebP for Chrome and iPhone. Um, but here you go. Uh, you get solid pricing. I mean, if you're looking at this solution, you have a big website, you have big needs, um, but you get solid pricing. So you have 250 gigabytes of transfer per month for $99. You can set up your own custom CNAME with HTTPS support, uh, and you get all of this nice performance statistics, a nice management control panel which, with analytics and metrics and graphs. Um, so this is a solid company, and they also offer like a 60-day free trial, so something to take a look at. It's a solid platform. Uh, I really like it. And for images, that wraps it up. For images, Image Engine, WP Stateless, Imageify, Short Pixel. Okay, so we have made it past the image optimization, the caching, the builder slash framework, the CDN, and the hosting. So now we're kind of on to more specialty plugins. Um, and these plugins are a couple different ones that fulfill different roles on the site. Um, first, I want to discuss Asset Cleanup Pro, and this is one of the plugins that is installed on every single one of our sites. So depending on the hosting, we may or may not use WP Rocket. We use that most of the time, but sometimes the host has their own caching plugin, so specifically Servebolt will use their own plugin. Um, the, the CDN changes depending on the needs. The framework doesn't really change, but sometimes we have to use a custom theme or something like that. But in terms of plugins on a site, Asset Cleanup is on every one of them. 
And the reason it's on every single one of them is because it allows us to offload unused CSS and unused JavaScript. And then it also allows us to go on a per page basis and defer the loading of specific scripts, load asynchronously, and really just optimize how our page loads. We can also figure out um, what plugins are running on pages and disable them on pages where they're not needed. So maybe on your homepage, um, you don't need your WooCommerce plugin to load all of the scripts and styles because you have no um, re reference to your WooCommerce setup on the homepage other than maybe a link to it. So we can completely disable that plugin, removing anything that takes up browser resources, takes up server resources, or transfers data. So CSS, JavaScript Manager, Plugins Manager, and those are the two main things we use. We also use this for font optimization. Um, so if we go to settings, we can set our fonts if I make it to, and you can see we have a ton of different things. And this actually notices that we are working with WP Rocket and it will um, let us know like, hey, you're working with WP Rocket. You may wanna use that or you may wanna use this. Here we use this, this primarily to optimize our fonts. When they load, you can work on your Google fonts. You can also work on your local fonts, applying font display swap and also preloading your local files. But we really use this to unload CSS and JavaScript on pages that it's not used and completely disable plugins on pages or ranges of pages or content types where they're not used. So for example, again, if we have Gravity Forms on our contact page, we don't need to be loading it on all of our blog posts so we can use the plugins manager and we can use a regex expression and say, we don't want this loading on any URL that has the word blog in it. Something like that. Um, this is what we use this plugin for. In terms of optimization, this allows us to go page by page and ensure that we are loading the absolute bare minimum of data to ensure that the page loads, but also make sure that we're not unnecessarily loading scripts that aren't used, which increase the bloat of the page and just make it load slower. So this is a must have plugin. It's a paid plugin, $49 um, for a single site, but in terms of plugins, <laughs> this is one that you need. WP Rocket Asset Cleanup, that's the perfect combination in terms of performance, script management, making things work. Uh, that's what you need. So <laughs> take a look at that. This is linked in the description. We also have a full feature article on the blog as well, which is also uh, linked right there. Then after this, there are a couple other specialty plugins that I wanted to mention. And some of them I have installed here to show you and some of them I do not have installed. So the first ones I wanna talk about actually are the ones that are not installed. And we can see actually uh, one of them are. So there is a collection of plugins. There, there are a collection of plugins called Flying. And I don't know if I search Flying if any of them will show up, but they're the flying scripts, flying analytics, flying images, flying pages, and there may be a couple other ones, but the flying plugin suite is created by the guy behind the website, wpspeedmatters.com, a great speed optimization blog, second only to isotrophy.co slash blog, but he actually offers a bunch of really great information and he's created these plugins for specific use cases. And it looks like it doesn't want to load, but you can see here that we have the flying analytics plugin loaded. We also like using flying scripts, which is the same thing that I discussed in the beginning with WP Rocket, where you can defer the loading of JavaScript until somebody begins to use your site. Uh, and it's just a very well-designed collection of plugins. So if in this example, flying analytics by speed matters, what this means is that we can locally host our Google Analytics on our WordPress website, which minimizes HTTP requests outside. It removes that. Um, we can host the analytics on our site. We can use a couple different methods. So minimal analytics is only one kilobyte. The actual library is 44 kilobytes and that you need that for the advanced features that Google comes with. And then we can also use GTAG version four, um, which is 91 kilobytes. But by, lo by locally hosting this, we can preload, we can uh, include in our, our combined files and we can remove an HTTP request by just placing our tracking code here and then choosing our methods, saving changes, and that is that. So that's just one of these plugins. There are a couple other ones. Um, we like using flying scripts a lot and uh, just recommend checking all of those out. They're completely free and they're really, really well done. Uh, they really boost the performance of any WordPress website. So something to take a look at there. 
now let's go right back to our plugins um we can locally host our google fonts by using omgf and this just allows us to pull the google font files onto our own website minimizing the third-party requests leveraging our browser cache uh, and just speeding up wordpress so hosting those fonts on our own server is important and beneficial to the speed of the website so that's something else to take a look at and then there are a couple other plugins there are two more that i want to discuss and then i'll get you to the end of this video i promise first is called black hole for bad bots so let's see if we can search for that okay so first up on this two two plugin list of specialty plugins is black hole for bad bots and what this does it traps the bad bots that do not include google search engine um, bots it traps all of these in a virtual black hole um, and ensures that they can never get to your wordpress website and the reason this is good is because we don't need our server resources used to generate and serve pages to bots that that aren't humans that aren't getting any benefit out of our website that are just leeching our resources so they get denied from our uh, website by just falling into the trap that this plugin has to set so you can see add your own virtual black hole trap for bad bots this is a good plugin in some cases it's not necessary uh, with the cloudflare enterprise the waf blocks all the bad bots from the get-go so you don't have to worry about this but this helps make sure that any bot that's not good for the site will be blocked and it will not use the resources that your server has to offer so by blocking this the bad bots you can speed up your site a little bit the one other one that i want to mention is called discuss conditional load and this is a plugin that is discuss and this is a plugin that does exactly what the name suggests and it conditionally loads your discuss comments and discuss is a really heavy library it is not good for your website performance at all but in some situations you just need to use it um, so you can see that it essentially lazy loads all of the comments and by doing that it ensures that there's no render blocking there's no unnecessary script data transfer and eventually it will load them as the user scrolls down to the comment section but it doesn't load them on the page load it loads them conditionally uh, which results in a faster initial loading time of the website so this is just one thing that i like mentioning because a lot of people use discuss we have a lot of clients who require discuss even though we'd rather get them off this platform but if you need to use that use this plugin to optimize that okay so that is really the collection of plugins that we use on the majority of our client websites to ensure that we build host and serve a fast loading website to our visitors no matter where they are on the globe the website's going to load quickly so let's quickly run through again all of these plugins uh, and hopefully this should give you a good list of tools that you may want to incorporate on your site and as i said in the beginning the foundation is the most important thing so getting good hosting is the the best step that you can take and if you don't have a budget i would say spend all of your money that you have available to you on solid hosting and then work from there so don't be spending money on plugins that can help optimize your website if you're on bad hosting because the primary reason that your website loads slowly is because you're on bad hosting so get off the bad hosting and then work upwards from that foundation so good hosting rocket.net servebolt cloudways there are a bunch of other ones uh, we actually did a bunch of speed testing so you can go on our blog and check out the speed testing of i think eight major uh, wordpress hosts that are oriented to speed do not be paying for anything like Bluehost or GoDaddy. Those are just really terrible hosting solutions. So get a good host. From that, work up to a CDN. CDN is good because it serves your content from a geographically close node, reducing latency re and increasing the loading time of your website to all visitors globally. Uh, we like StackPath, Cloudways, CDN, and Cloudflare Enterprise. Then the actual site and how it's built Oxygen Builder is our go-to, and the reason we use Oxygen is because it outputs low below code. We don't use any other page builders. If absolutely necessary, we will go and do a custom theme. And even with that, you just have to code it correctly. You have to build it outright, and you have to ensure that the code is as low bloat as possible. 
uh, ensures that the DOM is as small as possible and just makes things load a lot quicker. Be lean in your design. That's the main thing when it comes to creating a WordPress website. After the actual tools that you use to build the website, then it comes to caching and performance optimization. So for that, we use WP Rocket almost all of the time because it's easy to use. Um, it's a very powerful platform and it, we can also output all of our, our settings as a JSON and just import it into the new sites. Uh, and I'm going to do an article on the best WP Rocket settings and include that JSON. So follow the blog for that. Then after that, uh, image optimization. So for that, we use Imageify, which compresses our images. There are also online services, so you can use something like Tiny PNG if you have a huge file. But we use Imageify. In the past, we've used Short Pixel AI. We are using WP Stateless to host um, all of our images on Google Cloud servers, and then we can use Image Engine CDN to serve our images dependent on the browser and device type and all of that fun stuff. Then we get into more specialty plugins. Asset Cleanup Pro allows us to eliminate unused CSS and JavaScript from our websites. This is a super important plugin that we use on, I think, pretty much every single one of our sites because it allows us to exclude plugins, JavaScript, CSS, anything that increases the load time that isn't used on the page. Gotta go. And that's what we use that plugin for. Then with some specialty plugins, Flying Analytics, Flying Scripts, the whole flying suite is great. OMGF, hosting Google fonts locally is great. Black Hole for bad bots is great. Unless you have a, a WAF included in your CDN, which already does that. And in that case, minimize the bloat of an extra plugin and get rid of that. Discuss conditional load if you're using the best comments, which many people are, that's great. And uh, aside from that, that's really our stack. So hopefully this was a helpful video in letting you know kind of the plugins and solutions and the tools that we use for our speed stack. Pretty much all of these are paid. Um, and I've made a free video, a, a, well, <laughs> a video about free plugins that allow you to access similar capabilities, but with a free collection of plugins. If you're looking for simplicity and power, paid plugins will always win. So check out that video if you want to linked in the description alongside our complete article write-up alongside all of the links to the plugins discussed here alongside our table of contents and if this video is helpful give it a thumbs up give us a subscription we do a lot of content on wordpress speed optimization and that's our speed stack so until the next video i won't see you in the next video i will